Perfect, so say something. Hi. My name is Peter. Why am I here? Um, I think um, I, in my life until now, uh, the person who you are is uh, determined by your, your, um, your merits and the things you achieve uh, rather than the things you experience and uh, the, ad the adventures you go on. Um, and this was a big opportunity for me after 12 years uh, to, to have a gap, to leave the rat race and to, uh, to taste another life. I think I want to seek and live through the adventure of an uh, Atlantic crossing, you know, and in order to do that, I want to have great people around me, you know, that's very important for me. So that's why I chose Ocean Nomad <laughs> in the first place, uh, because I like the vibe and I like, yeah, I don't know, just, yeah, what it represents, all the values and everything. So um, I'm a traveler, I love to travel and um, I started my trip this year in Mexico, uh, went back for summer in Switzerland, worked a bit, see friends and family and then I was looking actually for a boat to cross, um, um, to sail was uh, in my head since a while. So it's, um, it was something that I really want to do and of course I don't have any experience. Not down the lens to you. No, to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Can we take you back a little bit? Of course. That's, uh, that's uh, a little bit comfortable there. Yeah, whatever. Of course, you can't, you know, fly to the jungle because that's making three tons of carbon right there. So I was always looking to come on a boat. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm here because uh, I really enjoy the, the ocean, you know, sailing particularly. I've been sailing for a few years in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, it's always a joy, you know, to go out with friends and just uh, go as fast as the boat can, can haul you. <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't happy in my job and my normal nine to five job and I just kind of want to follow my passion and love for the ocean and see where it takes me, see what journey it has to give me and hopefully I'll figure out what I want in life and what I want to do with myself in life. Someone just planted the idea um, like 10 years ago and it's just always stayed with me and I've always, always I've wanted to do it ever since. But I have no sailing experience. So. My name is uh, Jans Beekhuizen, I'm from the Netherlands and uh, I'm the captain of uh, the sailing vessel Twister. Mm. 
uh, I am one of the owners. Twister. Twister is now a two mast sailing schooner. And it was originally built as a, um, yeah, a ship with uh, steel frames and a wooden hull uh, in Germany. And it was sold to Holland after the war. And then they took off the wood planking on the outside and then they put steel around it. Si si lo si lo llena lo coja. Vale. Y y si alguien y si sabe alguna cosa del chico del coche ya él me dice que seguramente si te traerá tomate que te dijo tomate los plátanos y así ya pero si yo no sé tengo que preguntarle a él. Vale. Vale. Pasa luego le pregunto y te mando. Sí. Ya esta la notas tú. Sí. A ver. My name is Suzanne, I'm from the Netherlands and I'm the sole captain of Ocean Nomads. La ubicación. La ubicación. A ver, ¿dónde está mi teléfono? Entonces yo lo hago. Supongo que se me tendría que llevar el coche de Miguel. Trabajadores de la empresa Pesquerías Canario Africanas. Pronto comenzaron los trabajos de tendido del cable entre Tenerife y La Palma, como estaba previsto. Comenzando por la instalación de una caseta de amarre en la playa del Agua Dulce de los Hilos, construida de planchas metálicas. Y el 22 de noviembre... With Ocean Nomads and the sailing vessel Twister, we have co-organized a sailing voyage around the Atlantic Ocean. And I just jumped on board this week to sail across the Atlantic Ocean together with a bunch of Ocean Nomads. Um, having the adventure of a lifetime. My name is Paula, I am from Spain and I am on Twister crossing the Atlantic. Food management is been definitely a challenge, especially starting with the provisioning of it and everybody kind of like a, a, yeah, learning how to do this for such a big amount of people and for a long period taking into account that the lack of certain food on the other side in the Caribbean, so having to think about all of these aspects. I've learned a lot about this, very interesting. Hey, the mine's growing. Yeah. yeah. The house empty? Oh, we're nearly there.
uh, fierce. Um, I'm a bit worried about seasickness. I guess that's the answer you get a lot of the times. Um, so I want to get out there and then feel and experience it and then manage it. Right now the anticipation is a bit uh, worrisome. Uh, but other than that, I have uh, I have faith in the crew, I have uh, faith in the boats. I think it's gonna go well. Yeah. I am scared of being washed overboard and having to swim a long way. But on the other hand, in my mind, I am thinking I am on an adventure, you know. If I have to swim for 20 miles, I'm thinking I might make it. You know, I am a good swimmer. <laughs> but then I... What am I afraid of? Actually, the, I'm not really afraid of, of the ocean or like if I'm gonna die or something like that. Many of my friends are like, are you crazy? <laughs> you know, why, why are you doing this? <laughs> um, but I'm not, I'm not afraid of that. The only thing I'm afraid of is seasickness. So, and I, but then I'm thinking, you know, by wishing to be washed overboard and forced to swim through shark infested waters, am I making it more likely to happen? <laughs> so yeah, that's on my mind. Many fears as well, but I'll stick with being chased by sharks over 20 miles of sea as a first fear. I hope that we're not going to sink, of course, <laughs> and we um, safely can make it through the, to the Caribbean. I don't have any fear about being in the middle of the ocean right now. That feels really exciting to me. It's difficult in a small, small um, place to live like, next to each other 24-7. Um, but it's also really interesting. It's kind of a human project, right? <laughs> like a social project. <laughs> uh, well, I, don't, I really don't have any fears. I think, you know, I trust the boat. I looked at all the rigging, the crew. Everybody's very competent. And plus, you know, we're catching the trade winds. So unless there is a real, you know, terrible squall or uh, lots of rain or, you know, some nasty waves coming our way, which could happen. But I think we can deal with it. We got a good, good pair. Um, I think so. Fear of the unknown, I think, like where life is going to bring me or even on this journey, like not knowing what next is. Uh, well, probably, but if you think too much about the fears you are having, you can better quit your job because uh, there's lots of things that can go wrong. And uh, you have to try to uh, to avoid dangerous situations. Yeah, but uh, yeah, of course uh, you can have. Uh, uh, sometimes you think about uh, what if someone gets hurt uh, and you're far away from the coast or uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So that's the, that's the main fear. So if mechanical stuff uh, or something with the sails or with the ship, uh, all is repairable most of the times. But uh, personal injuries is uh, a bit more difficult. Tomorrow. We set off. We go on a big, a big adventure. Yeah, it's. I'm ready. Tomorrow, what is happening tomorrow? We start our adventure. <laughs> so tomorrow we set sail from Tenerife straight for the Caribbean, and uh, yeah, together with uh, 17 people. We, uh, we sailed across and uh, tomorrow we, we start heading south and west. My name is Stefan. I'm from Sweden, and I'm uh, well. I'm sailing to the Caribbean.
something that I've always wanted to do. Not always, but uh, the late last 15 years or so. Uh, and uh, it's suited uh, right now in, in my life and uh, when it comes to works and things like that. So. My name is Nitya, I come from Switzerland and uh, on Twister I'm the deckhand. Uh, why am I here? Uh, well, many reasons, but uh, the last reason, the most recent reason was that I discovered ocean nomads and uh, I really wanted to join the adventure, so I was working on other ships and I thought, well, this is the kind of ships and the kind of people I want to work with. My name is uh, Ian uh, Kramer and uh, I'm here a second mate, working as second mate in Twister. I was looking for a job and uh, yeah, that's just how faith works. I end up with a nice bunch of people and uh, an interesting uh, program and uh, uh, mentality uh, with those nomads, yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe you explain it because it's just well, different categories. Um, I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea and the sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the wind a song and the wise. Let your water flow, let the forgetful Deep breaths will rock the boat She says I don't wanna float Float your mouth on the water, dear Have a little hand if you hear Have my 
We start with the lids on the mother dose. This one was used today, so this one goes further back in the fridge. And which of these we use tomorrow will smell sick. Uh, to prepare, prepare the bread on board, it's that we, we, we got lucky, or rather had the fortune to uh, uh, get some sourdough mothers from, uh, one, from Brianne's boyfriend. And that was really good because they're still thriving and, and uh, making uh, perfectly rising good bread for us each, each morning. Uh, and it's, it just starts uh, with uh, you, you prepare a pre dough, uh, kind of watery. We, we... Here comes the bread, kiddo. Here comes the bread again. Looks perfect. Very nice. Little dewy, but perfect. Pretty nice. My name is Guido. I'm from Holland, from the Netherlands, and uh, and I'm 68 years. An official bucket shower. Oh. Oh. And since I'm a young pensioner, I said, why take a plane? It doesn't make sense to take a plane. I really want to have uh, to, to sail to America. <laughs> Great price, too. Give me another, please. <laughs> <laughs> and then instantly, the second reason was it's adventurous to go on the, on the ocean. I mean, we, it's about 70% of all our earth, you know, it's just water. And I've never ever traveled the waters as I do now. Huh? You bring that My name is Mike Hadrath. I'm from uh, originally Toronto, Canada, uh, but I'm living in the Netherlands now. Um, and I'm on this boat because uh, it's, it's become a dream of mine to sail across the Atlantic. Well, so the watch that I'm in is from uh, 12 to 4, so that's uh, both uh, 12 o'clock in the afternoon till 4 p.m. and then also 12 midnight till 4 a.m. and we do waste management, so we um, separate all of the, the trash on board into uh, different categories, plastics, papers, um, glass and, and metal, and then we uh, um, separate them accordingly, uh, cut them up so they're nice and small, clean them, so that we really c can manage our waste in a, in, a, in a way that allows us to be able to cross the Atlantic without having so much um, excess trash and, and without, you know, making the boat smell too bad with the trash, basically. surprises when it comes to the waste management um, it really you become much more aware of actually how much waste you use and how during regular life we really don't um, take the time to, to separate it or, or manage it in a way that we would when we're in this type of environment offshore where waste management is very important for the the hygiene of the boat and also for the, the cleanliness of, of the boat and the environment I'm a marine biologist and I'm working with whales and dolphins at the University of the Azores. I have been living in these islands for a while now, and while I was working as a whale watching guide, I have had plenty of opportunities to see these beautiful animals in the wild. Today, I'm here to present you one of the projects that I developed during my PhD. It's called Sail and Whale, and it's a citizen science project that aims to compile sightings of whales and dolphins reported by you, sailors, and make this information useful for science. Look, we did jump! Oh
I'm hoping to learn things that I don't know what I'm going to learn yet, you know. Every day, like I learn a new thing. Like today I've been learning how to cook and how to cope in a kitchen when I'm quite stressed. But I'm with two other people who are being really sweet. So uh, yeah, I guess what I was learning was um, connection, how to rely on other people. Well, um, definitely, I mean, this is a schooner, so I want to learn everything, you know, that uh, deals with navigating the ship and uh, also to deal with the different situations that we may encounter uh, on the passage. Of course, to sail, um, to live the community life with other people, share experience, share uh, stories. I mean, we always can learn something. To learn. Oh. It's a difficult question about myself in this new group dynamic in this context of like having to work together, live together in a close space. Um, I'm hoping to learn more about um, the sea and the stars and uh, just keep falling in love with this beautiful earth that we have. Like obviously the basics in sailing and progress my knowledge of it and also navigation even navigating with the stairs being on the night watch and all now I'm excited to give that a shot interesting thing about trips like this is how all the people um, fit together and cooperate and sometimes it goes well sometimes it uh, goes uh, not so well and uh, how to uh, manage all this uh, to get to a, to get everything to a good end yes. because it's a very long trip i am looking forward to live a life closer to nature live a life disconnected from like all social media all that bullshit you know it's it's nice i love that life but at the same time i need a break and that's why i'm doing it as well and looking forward to learn how is it not be connected to the outside world to me that is the essence of of, of this whole trip it's it's first of all it's it's about the community about the people you're you're traveling with and the nice thing of a boat there's no escape. You can't go nowhere, right? So you have to figure out how you do it. And actually, that's very good. It's very good. Now we have uh, some contact with some uh, with an with English uh, boats and um, with, some, with some French boats, but there were a couple of days. So at the moment we are really uh, sailing alone. <laughs> Love to uh, to come and check out your community. Fair winds to you all. Safe passage and see you on the flip side.
So I'll break you into teams. You're team A. Uh, team A, uh, when my hands are up like that, a little round of applause, please. Yay! Very good. Team A, was, that was warm. Uh, you will. <laughs> when the hands go down, then you must go quiet. So ready? Give her a round of applause. <laughs> come and sit down, Dr. Hurst-Fulbert. Now, you've come here a long way, isn't that correct? I have indeed. Which country have you just come from to be here tonight? Uh, India. <laughs> Uh, well, I hope to bring, um... you know, sitting under the stars and really wanting to talk about why his father hated him or, you know, why he's scared of um, what's going to happen when he arrives. And so I hope that I could respond to that. So I guess what I'm hoping to bring is to respond correctly to each moment. Do this uh, trip. Well, uh, hopefully to bring everybody safe to the other side. Uh, I like to bring joy and playfulness as well. Um, singing and... It's time to put on your bathing suits and go for a little dive. I'm uh, extremely thankful that we got to do it and uh, it's, it's something that I will remember for the rest of my life being able to stop in the middle of the Atlantic on this on this vessel and, and swim in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's uh, one of those things you never really think that you'll get to do in your life. It is so cool. And then, you know, it's just, it's getting hot now. So it really, you, you cool down and it's, but it, yeah, very exciting. Very exciting.
today, today we saw this very small barn swallow landing on the ship. And it got to be the closest land is still a thousand kilometers from here. So I was very touched by it somehow. It makes me a bit emotional. So because th this is his last, you know, resort. If it goes on, it, it will drown. I'd like to think I can bring some laughs and joy to the team as well. Help people if they're feeling down. Yeah. Please write the number, not the, not the option. No. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, what can I bring on board? I think I offer a great personality. I'm very social. Like, uh, I, I, I find myself very funny. Other people's do as well. excited to show you this uh, this film I have a close connection with uh, um, well with the people involved in the film but also with uh, with the boats with the movie is about uh, when I arrived in the Caribbean in 2017 I saw this amazing in his late 60s and can no longer wait for an outside order. hitchhiking to this island and spending two months on Dominica so I remember a few things uh, I remember a few things not everything and I love the island for its nature and its pureness um, so we will arrive from here and we will drop anchor in Portsmouth
Oof, to see land for the first time after that long at sea was a very uh, interesting feeling. It was uh, wonderful. It's almost like the, 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 whole, the whole journey is almost complete, which is a sad thing, but also a fun thing. So it was, uh, it was very interesting. After so long at sea, you don't really have any landmarks, nothing to tell you that you're actually moving and going places other than the GPS. Well, uh, right now I'm really, I'm, I'm glad, I'm happy, I'm, I, I, I'm, uh, I've had it, it was beautiful, the sailing part was really nice, it was beautiful, but I'm really, I, I, I'd li really like to, to get ashore and get the feeling of uh, terra firma <laughs> again, not to have the rolling part, it would be an interesting uh, experience to, to stand on land. How do I feel now we've reached the Caribbean? Contented, quiet, and ready for the next part of my adventure. Uh, we didn't watch any of the World Cup. Uh, some of the boys are like, hey, wait, when we arrive, we have the final. So we are all like looking forward to see the final. Sad and happy. You know, um, sad in that we will miss the open ocean and that whole quietness of sailing, you know, and the stars and the sunrise and sunset. Uh, and see the trees. I feel very excited to go on shore, actually. Can't wait to walk in the nature, do some waterfall diving things. And, uh, yeah, but first we have to clean the ship. <laughs> they say that we, we came from the water as a species, long, long, long time ago. But I love land as well, you know. So, uh, yeah, but I, I want to find out about living on the sea. I want to find out about 70% of our globe, right? Which is water, which I did. Let's talk a little bit about behind the scenes. All right. Um, how was it to make this movie? It was a very unique uh, experience uh, in terms of uh, capturing everything on a moving object uh, for uh, quite a few weeks uh, with uh, random strangers and living together, uh, doing everything together, being on watch, uh, cooking and uh, all what you need to do in a boat, uh, plus uh, filming, uh, which is also uh, new to me, uh, so it's sailing. So it was an interesting roller coaster uh, in many ways, but a beautiful experience. I mean, you don't have to sail an ocean to uh, try something new, but uh, 
uh, this maybe can sow a little seed somewhere um, and uh, yeah you never know uh, now when I have uh, been through uh, the editing part uh, and uh, we have the result I, I feel pretty uh, happy I would say and uh, I'm proud uh, of uh, what I managed to to put together but it's nothing without everybody that is shining uh, in the film